So, first week of 2021 is officially in the books. And I think it's safe to say that we are already counting down the days until New Year's Eve 2022. 2020 just decided to carry on the fun a little bit longer. What didn't carry on into 2021 was a long-standing internet plugin from Adobe known as Flash. As of December 31st, 2020, Adobe officially ended support for Flash Player, which gave us everything from YouTube videos to those games you could play in middle school on Computer Lab back in 2006. Those were the days. But this was by no means a sudden death. Flash had been plagued with issues that had it limping along until July of 2017, when Adobe announced the end of life for Flash would come at the end of 2020. So, what happened? What were the causes that ultimately brought down the software platform and helped birth the internet we know and sometimes love today? I'm Connor Mitchell of Dragon Rider Network, and it's time for an explanation, a simplified explanation. Let's get into it. So there are a few key issues that ultimately spelled the end for Adobe Flash. The first of those issues for Adobe Flash was security, something that Flash had been struggling with for a while. When you go to a website, your browser is sending and receiving massive amounts of data from a lot of places. Even if you are just on one website, multiple aspects of that website can come from different servers and different organizations. For example, if you went to target.com, the images could be hosted on one server, but the e-commerce portion could be hosted on another server entirely. Because of that, many of these websites are being juggled by the browser to make sure information that should be shared with one is not being shared with the others. It's also important for the browser to not let that information get to anyone outside of that circle. Since Flash is a browser plugin, there is now an extra doorway that security threats can slip through. And because developers are only human, Flash has had a lot of problems involving its security. What this ultimately resulted in for years was Adobe pushing out update after update to try and patch security holes in Flash that could open your computer to unfriendly eyes online. Now that Adobe has removed support for Flash, plenty of articles online are still telling you to remove Flash from your computer to save yourself the headaches that come with worrying about possible security compromises. Even in death, Adobe Flash is still getting us to stop whatever we're doing and pay attention to an important Flash update. The second major issue for Flash was the rise of new technologies that could provide what Flash did, but better, and no other technology made this more apparent than HTML5. A bit of history. HTML is the code that pretty much every website is written on. HTML4 was released in 1997 to help further the development of the outstanding catalog of websites on the World Wide Web. However, the capabilities of HTML4 in terms of what it could display were limited to text and very basic images. Around the same time, what would eventually become Adobe Flash began to offer the ability to run more advanced media such as online games and videos. This is because it worked off a plugin that provided the resources necessary to allow for viewing of such files. This helped give rise to websites like Newgrounds and YouTube, which took advantage of this additional power. But when HTML5 hit the digital streets in 2008 and was finalized in the latter half of 2014, Flash became far less appealing. HTML5 was far less resource intensive and didn't require a plugin, making it more appealing to a wider range of developers who would no longer have to worry about their video files being supported as they could now be played back natively through HTML5. Flash was also proprietary, meaning that if your online product needed Flash to run it, it would essentially be useless on devices that could not or would not run Flash. Devices like the iPhone. This brings me to my third point that caused Flash to go away. Apple. Steve Jobs famously wrote and released an open letter in 2010 criticizing Adobe Flash for various problems he believed it would have on the line of mobile devices that Apple was now releasing, including the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the newly released iPad, which was under the most fire for not having Flash. Many of these issues that Apple gave were pretty much in line with the earlier issues I talked about. Apple was strict when it came to security around their mobile devices. Flash, with its history of security problems, was given a black mark in the eyes of Apple. Flash was also extremely resource intensive, and as this may have had some impact on your desktop computer, it stood to be disastrous when it came to energy consumption on mobile devices like the iPhone, which, in its early days, already had to fight to keep halfway decent battery life. HTML5 with everything built in rather than using a plugin was the answer to interactive media on mobile devices. And with the rise of the App Store, online Flash games took a backseat to games that could now be developed and optimized for mobile devices like the iPhone or the iPad. 
Apple also didn't want third-party applications between them and the developer. Because of all this, Apple took the faults of Adobe Flash and brought them to the public discussion. Once Apple showed that their devices could make it big without Flash, the writing was on the wall for Adobe. So, in the end, constant problems around security, increased competition from new technologies, and Apple ultimately sealing the fate of Adobe Flash is what led to where we are now. Now, lots of content online, mostly old Flash games, require the now dead plugin, but developers are in a race to get these converted to HTML5 or get them running on emulators. As much as it might pain us to lose what we loved in the past, it is a sign that technologies of today are advancing far beyond what technologies of yesterday could ever hope to achieve.